Um, throughout the day, we have learned a lot about the San Diego real estate market, the state of California's real estate market, and even taking a look at the national view of real estate. Now, I'd like to shift your focus abroad. We are going to hear about real estate on a global level. We are honored to have so many international delegations that have traveled to be here with us today. The next presentation will give each of the international delegation representatives an opportunity to tell us about real estate in their market. Leading the presentation is our esteemed guest and collaborator today and the originator of the Miami International Real Estate Congress, Teresa King Kinney, CEO of the Miami Association of Realtors, whose organization, If you don't know her, she's kind of a celebrity in the international world of real estate, as well as in Florida. Um, having promoted and created this event for the past 21 years, representing over, what she just now told me, 41,000 realtors through mergers, acquisitions, growth initiatives, and great foresight in the southern Florida region, uh, as well as partnerships with 125 international organizations as well. Please give a round of applause for Teresa Kinney from the Miami Association of Realtors. Thank you all. It's great to be with you at the first San Diego International Real Estate Congress. And haven't they done a great job putting this together? We can tell you from personal experience, it's supposed to look easy, but it really isn't. It, it takes a lot of work to do. I'd like to invite all of our international guests who are going to be speaking to come on up and take their place here on stage. And as you do that, I will be introducing you, but do not wait to be introduced because um, we want to allow more time for your program. So please come on up. We have Mark Hayward from United, Managing Director of United Kingdom, National Association of Estate Agents. Come on up. We have, no, I mean the others. <laughs> We have Atsuko Yube, who is the chapter president of ARIA Silicon Valley with the Asian Real Estate Association of America. We have Mario Oldian, who is president of the State Council for CEP IBC Realtors in Baja, California. We have Ujawa. Oh, I'm sorry, Ophelia Ujawa. I was so concerned about getting her right, her last name right. I did it first. And Alan Lungo, you can, you'll be joining us in a few moments. She is the international director with the Costa Rica Real Estate Association. And then from the Russian Real Estate Association, the director of real estate, Ildar Hus... Hus no, I promised. I practiced this. Hasenov. And that may not be exactly right. After we did it 10 times, he said, that's fine. <laughs> and so uh, from Brazil, uh, friends and family, Joaquin Ribeiro, who is president of FANASI, and Flavio Amri, who is the next president of Sokovi SP. So please congratulate and welcome our international panel. Now I'm going to ask each of you who speak to go to the other lectern, if you will, and I'm going to trust that the presentations are going to be in the same order as the list I was given. Yes. Mark Hayward, you're up first. United Kingdom National Association of Estate Agents. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I can either take, talk about the UK property market or I can tell you what happens at the end of Downton Abbey because it finished on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> or if you want to pay me money, I can tell you very quietly. Um, it, it's an absolute pleasure to be here uh, and it's great to be talking about the UK. Uh, and as you can tell, that's where I come from. Um, I really would like to sort of give you an overview of what's going on. Super, we're working now. Um, UK. You probably don't know, there are actually six legal um, jurisdictions within the UK. We've got different property law uh, in Scotland as opposed to England. Uh, Wales is changing. Northern Ireland is slightly different. And we've got a couple of islands uh, just on the edge of the UK which are um, uh, not tax exempt, but very favourable taxation, which is Jersey, 
and uh, Guernsey. Uh, in the UK, we are currently experiencing property transactions at the level of about 1 million uh, per annum, which is 35% down on the boom and is unlikely to change uh, at the moment. And we have uh, probably, I suppose, 25 million households uh, in the UK. So it's a very, very small proportion of uh, housing stock uh, being transacted uh, on an annual basis at the moment. So if you lived in the UK, you would probably be staying in your house for 25 years. Um, so we hope the next one is pound. Yes, we've got a very strong pound in the UK. The economy is strong. Uh, and we've got good growth. Uh, we don't tend to have uh, natural disasters in the UK, uh, so property is safe. Um, so much so that we're experiencing something in, in excess of 35 to 70 billion pounds worth of money laundering uh, in property uh, annually at the moment. So, you know, if you are illegal, if you're organised crime, and in fact, we've actually got evidence that organised crime has bought uh, realtors or state agents, as we call them over there, to facilitate money. So your money is safe. So if people are going to put that sort of money, <laughs> dirty money, uh, into the UK, um, you, you should be investing too. Wasn't expecting that in the presentation. No. Thank you very much. You're probably not expecting my next slide Oh, either. OK, good. <laughs> and I want... You will not see that in any other presentation over the next few days, I, I can agree. guarantee. But I want you just to hold that thought. Um, for those of you who don't know or recognise it, it's a banana. I'm told never to insult your audience. Never insult your audience. But I want you to think about that as we go, as we go through the presentation. Um, Houses of Parliament, uh, that's where uh, our laws are created. I was there uh, speaking to the House of Commons and the House of Lords uh, last week actually on uh, money laundering because uh, we had a very uh, a revealing program early in the year called From Russia uh, with Cash um, <laughs> and it showed again people investing in the UK. Um, so we've got, we've got a new Tory government this year so we've got five years of stability which is good. Um, the housing targets uh, for the UK are set uh, by the government uh, but they have to be enacted uh, locally rather than nationally. Uh, but that's where it all happens. And in fact, if you come to the UK, our office is just behind the Houses of Commons uh, adjoining Westminster Abbey. Um, stamp duty, taxes, uh, that's the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, we have a uh, top income rate, uh, income tax rate of 50% in the UK, uh, starts at uh, 30% and moves up. Uh, there's no barrier to uh, foreign investment. Uh, the only barrier is what we call stamp duty, which is a tax that the purchaser will pay uh, on property. This was realigned last December uh, and has caused at the, uh, I'll convert it into dollars, into the $3 million plus market uh, some concern because it's added another uh, $250,000 to the tax that you would pay uh, when you purchase a property. So that's sort of um, kept the market a bit subdued. Right. <laughs> Remember the banana. Remember the banana. We are about one million homes behind in terms of building uh, in the UK. Um, the building industry hasn't really recovered um, from the recession, um, but we have a very um, we have a, a, an issue with the planning and development of new homes because nobody wants it, if you know the term NIMBY, not in my backyard, banana, build absolutely nothing anywhere near anyone. <laughs> and that's the sort of philosophy uh, that we have. Uh, the planning is local. Uh, the local uh, elect the MPs, the MPs go to government. So it's a real difficult balance to get enough houses in the UK. But we are... Um, experiencing, I think, an 11-year low in housing transactions, an 11-year low in the number of houses on the market, uh, and a 12-year high in the number of people looking uh, for homes uh, within the UK. So it's going, uh, in terms of realtors, very well, because you can sell property, but badly because you have no inventory, you don't have any stock. Um, first-time buyers, um, traditionally a first-time buyer in the UK was aged 24 to 26, 
Uh, they're currently aged in excess of 36, 38. Uh, some first-time buyers can't even afford to buy up until the age of about 42, uh, which is a problem because they become generation rent. Great if you want to buy and invest because there's always going to be uh, tenants out there. You're going to get a good yield, uh, but not if you are striving to get on the housing ladder. The average house price in the UK at the moment is just over $450,000. Uh, if you're in London and the South East, it's just over $800 thousand dollars. So to get on the property ladder, you would have to have an income uh, in excess of $120,000 uh, to even get a mortgage. Uh, the problem with mortgages uh, is they're difficult. They've got more difficult. Uh, we had a, uh, a piece of work by the Bank of England last year, which is called the Mortgage Market Review, uh, which is to discourage indiscriminate lending, but it's made it very, very difficult for people to get finance. Again, that's why we're seeing uh, low transactions. Um, baby boomers, baby boomers. Um, I did a presentation in front of a Japanese legation a year ago, and it's very difficult to tell them why the baby boom actually happened without mentioning the war, but I did. Um, we've got, we haven't got an issue with baby boomers, we've got an issue with what we call bedroom blockers, because 41% of all the housing in the UK is owned by people over 65, and they're not moving. Uh, I know are. Uh, we also don't have a great uh, record of creating what I would call, we don't call it retirement housing, we call it sort of downsizing or right sizing. Um, and we're not in the UK providing that type of housing at the moment. So people are generally planning to stay put, uh, which means that people wanting to move up the ladder are, have got real difficulty. Um, inflation, uh, pretty well stable. Um, Bank of England sets the rates, they're still at 0.5%, so at the moment things look good. At the moment we're not uh, experiencing um, an economic turmoil, and the Bank of England has indicated last week it's unlikely to raise interest rates uh, until probably now, until the end of next year. Um, so finance is looking good. Um, housing market is on an upward trajectory. Um, most areas are well in excess of where they were in 2007, apart from some areas in the northeast. Um, so we've got strong housing inflation, uh, we've got strong demand, we've got lack of supply. Um, I don't believe that we're going to see uh, a downward turn at the moment. Uh, some of the uh, uh, instances in China um, may have caused some of the stock market to um, decline somewhat, but at the moment it seems set fair. I'm saying that with my fingers crossed because these things come out uh, of the mist and uh, haunt you, but at the moment uh, it looks good. In terms of housing, uh, we're going to have to build more, we're going to have to look at alternative structures. At the moment in the UK it's very much uh, bricks and mortar. Anybody looks at any housing that's not made out of brick or stone uh, with a tiled roof as something suspect. Um, so again, uh, we are very open and should be very open to uh, creating uh, newer homes, different homes, but at the moment our lending criteria is that the home must last for a minimum of 70 years, uh, otherwise you will not be able to get a mortgage on it. So apart from the fact it rains a lot in the UK, um, it's a great area to invest. Um, if you come to the UK and look to invest, you'll find uh, the realtor situation is somewhat different uh, over there uh, than it is in most parts of the world. Uh, there is no minimum standard for estate agents unless there are members, uh, so anybody can set up as a real estate agent uh, tomorrow. But we cover 75% of the marketplace. Our members are regulated. Uh, and if you're looking to invest in the UK, you should contact us. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mark. Let's hear it from Mark Hayward. And now we have Asko Yube, and she's going to tell us about Japan. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me here. Um, I don't know if you have the slide. Um, we should have. Do we do? OK. Anyway, um, just want to clarify, I live here now. in the United States. I am originally from Japan. I was born and raised um, in Tokyo. I came here as a teenager and uh, recently had a chance to go back to Japan and learn about the real estate business. 
Anyway, <laughs> I live in Silicon Valley, a um, small town called Saratoga, California. Um, but um, so I recently uh, went back to visit Japan and I learned the business there and I fell, fell in love with the country again. And so uh, I'm with an organization called ARIA, Asian Real Estate Association of America. Who knows about ARIA? Yay, thank you. Who's member of ARIA? <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. So I am the current president of Silicon Valley chapter, by the way, and uh, uh, we started doing a trade mission uh, to different countries. In 2013, uh, we did a trade mission to Japan. We had about 33 delegates from the United States to Japan, and we started connecting with the trade organizations there and um, businesses over there. And then we formed a little group called Japan Connect within ARIA. There's an ARIA global section, um, ARIA global um, within the ARIA, which is a for-profit arm of ARIA. And we have a little uh, group called Japan Connect, and we do connect businesses. Um, so through that, I learned how to um, do business um, with the Japanese professionals over there. And uh, we've been um, uh, you know, educating um, in the both end and, and, and trying to, um, to cultivate the a business relationship. So um, in Japan, uh, so Japan, who's, who's been to Japan? Oh, quite a few. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, as you, got, you know, um, those of you who's visited Japan and those of you who hasn't not yet visited Japan, I highly recommend. Um, Japan is a, a modern and has a history. Um, when you think of Japan, you think of Tokyo, a great city, big city. There, but there are a lot of places that are not developed yet or will never develop. Um, the, the population in Japan is very concentrated in Tokyo area. And Tokyo has a population of about 122.6 million. Um, and it is an aging population. Um, it's, last year, it's, it's decreased 4.13%. Um, and uh, Tokyo population is about 9.05 million, uh, million um, people. Uh, about 23 awards a section with 17 suburb cities. There's a greater Tokyo co that consists of 36 million people. So as you can see, the population is very concentrated in Tokyo area and it is about a quarter percent of the whole Japan population that live in Tokyo area. Um, so, um, let's see. Uh, a few things to know about Japan. Um, as you know, in 2011, there was a great earthquake that hit in Japan. And, and the country is still suffering from that. Um, there were about 16,000 loss of lives and 6,000 injured, 3,000 still missing, and 365,000 uh, buildings destroyed. And US of about uh, 235 billion loss, that's the biggest loss in history. And as you know, uh, Fukushima area is still um, trying to deal with the nuclear disaster over there. Um, Japan is... Um, has a, a GDP of about $4.616 trillion, uh, fourth in the world. GDP per capita is, is 37,400. 37, um, the country is lack of most of the natural minerals and fossil fuels resources, especially after the earthquake hit. Um, the country heavily depend on foreign resources. But Japan is uh, the world largest tech advanced producer, as you know, and motor vehicle, electronic uh, equipment, machinery tools, um, and has a service sector produce, uh, service sector produces 73% of the economic output. Small agricultural sector, about only 1% of GDP. And Japan is unique in that 
There's what they call Keiretsu. It's a unique alliance of companies to influence Japanese economy. Um, let's see. Yeah, and so I, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, a Tokyo, living in, in, in Tokyo. A small space is what they're used to in the apartments of about 45 square meters, it's 484 square foot in average. A single family home is like 121 square meters, uh, about 1,302 square foot, about. Um, so typically there's only one bed bathroom and uh, bedroom is traditionally a have of tatami floor um, and and you know as you know people do take take off shoes and and um, those are the traditional things that we do in in Japan average price for Tokyo for new condo we call it a mansion is about uh, five thousand US dollars per square uh, for um, uh, square meter, yes, <laughs> square meter, it has to be square meter, and uh, $467, uh, about a uh, square foot. And um, we, we are very, um, one of the things I should mention to you is that we will have all of the PowerPoint presentations, whether you've seen them or not, will be posted on the web. Yeah. And so uh, San Diego Association will have them on their website, and I'm sure they can send you out a link to all of those. We will also post them on the Miami website. And uh, we're going to say thank you to Atsuko. Thank you so much for okay. all of your presentation. All we'll right. make sure that we get the rest of it. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Todos dicen buenas tardes, ¿verdad? Muy bien. Pues muchas gracias a San Diego, a la Asociación de San Diego, por invitarnos el día de hoy, Chris, Mark y a los demás uh, del Consejo Directivo de San Diego. Muchas gracias. Thank you, SDAR, for inviting us to this International Congress. I'm glad to be here today. Normalmente, todos los que estamos aquí hablamos inglés, pero para que no me vayan a entender mal, Mejor voy a hablar en español y Luis va a ser nuestro traductor. Usually uh, we have people speak English, uh, but this time I'm going to make it different. I'm going to speak in Spanish and Luis will translate for me. <laughs> y espero que el botón verde funcione. I hope uh, he does pretty well. <laughs> Perfecto. ¿Qué le vamos a hacer el botón verde? El verde. Bien, pues México, el vecino, el vecino uh, al sur de Estados Unidos. Mexico, the neighbor in the south. Es un, es un país donde a, tenemos hospitalidad. Es un country known for their hospitality. Tenemos vocación de servicio. We're known for the service industry. Y tenemos una ubicación privilegiada. And we're in a privileged uh, area. Tenemos... 3,326.5 kilómetros de frontera con Estados Unidos. We have 3,326.5 kilometers of, um, with the border of the U.S. Y tenemos un litoral en el Pacífico y un litoral en el Golfo de México. And we are next to the uh, Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Además de tener una colindancia con, en Centroamérica, con 1,149 kilómetros, de igual manera. Perfecto. Una variedad climática, tenemos todos los climas en México. We have every climate in Mexico. Tenemos destinos de playa que todos conocen, la Riviera Maya, Los Cabos, Puerto Vallarta, Riviera, Acapulco, Iztapalapa, Veracruz. Todos los destinos que ustedes deseen y que todos conocen. ¿No conocen México? You guys all know Mexico. Que levante la mano el que no conoce México. Raise your el hand que no conoce México. México. El que no conoce México, a ver. If you don't know it. 
Y el que sí conoce México. And the ones that know Mexico. A ver, ¿cuántos? Tú. Caray. Bueno, pues los que no han ido, se la están perdiendo. ¿eh? If you haven't gone, you're missing out. <laughs> Tenemos 25 destinos ecoturísticos en el país. We have 25 ecotourism uh, places. Ricas tradiciones y somos el cuarto lugar en turismo cultural. We have uh, rich uh, traditions and we're the fourth uh, largest in cultural worldwide. Tenemos una riqueza culinaria. We have uh, great food. <laughs> 15 ciudades coloniales. Five colonial cities. I mean, 15. Sorry. Se quedaron 10 perdidas. Yeah. We lost 10 on the translation. <laughs> En el 2012 se registraron 1,168 museos de todo tipo en el Distrito Federal, quedando como segundo lugar con más museos en el mundo. En 2012, en uh, Mexico City, there were 1,168 museums registered in Mexico City, which becomes the second uh, largest uh, city with museums in the world. México. Cuenta con 85 aeropuertos, 26 nacionales, 56 internacionales, 117 puertos marítimos domésticos, 20 internacionales, 123 mil kilómetros de carretera principales y 27 mil kilómetros de vías férreas. Uh, Mexico uh, has 85 airports, 26 national airports, 59 international, 117 ports. Uh, that are domestic and 20 international ports, 123,000 kilometers of highways, and 27,000 uh, kilometers of uh, ro uh, railroad trains. <laughs> El proyecto del aeropuerto que se va a construir en la Ciudad de México se espera atender de más de 120 millones de usuarios para el 2018. The new airport in Mexico City in 2008 uh, is going to expect about 120 million people visiting. Los principales puertos de México, que son 20 puertos de altura, ustedes los podrán ubicar ahí en esta, ya me pasé la presentación. The 20 ports in Mexico, uh, as you guys can see, those are the ones in the, um, in the map. Somos actualmente entre el segundo y el tercer lugar en producción de vehículos en el mundo. We're in between the second and third uh, most production on cars. La industria aeroespacial in ha crecido considerablemente en los últimos siete años, como podrán ustedes ver en la tabla. The aerospace industry has, um, uh, has grown up to 250 in the last seven years. Actualmente la industria aeroespacial es un centro de oportunidad en México. The aerospace uh, industry is a area of opportunity in Mexico. Por supuesto que yo que vivo en Baja California podrán ver que estamos en el lugar número uno. Of course, since I live in, Mex in uh, Baja California, you guys can see that the number one in the aerospace is Baja California. Así que si no lo digo yo, pues quién más lo va a decir, ¿eh? La normatividad. En los últimos años, en los últimos años, eh, el Congreso, el Senado, lo que viene siendo el Poder Legislativo, ha venido haciendo fuertes regulaciones en materia fiscal y en materia eh, económica. Uh, in the last uh, years, there has been new law changes through the Congress of Mexico on how you can invest in Mexico. Como podrán ver. Como destino turístico, turístico en Latinoamérica, competimos, competimos fuertemente con Centro y Sudamérica. Eh, podrán ver que nuestros principales competidores, ahí los tenemos. You guys can see with tourism in Mexico, we're competing with Latin America, and you guys can see some of the countries that we are competing against. Tenemos 23, más de 23 millones de visitas internacionales, más de 83 millones de visitas nacionales, y alrededor, apenas con alrededor de 325 mil cuartos de hotel en toda la República Mexicana. 
uh, tourism in Mexico, you can see that we have to over 23 million uh, people visiting internationally, 83 million uh, nationally people that travel within Mexico, and 325,000 um, um, hotel rooms. Como podrán ver, la mayor parte de los inversionistas, la mayor parte de las inversiones en México ha sido el turismo, el turismo inmobiliario es uno de los fuertes actualmente en nuestro país. The strongest uh, area in real estate is the tourism um, sector for real estate, as you guys can see, people buy second homes. Según los últimos reportes que hemos tenido, actualmente la industria de la construcción y la industria de, de bienes raíces aportamos a la fecha el 15.7% del producto interno del país. The tourism uh, usually carries 15.7% of the um, gross income in Mexico for tourism, through tourism. Ya estoy metiendo en problemas a mi traductor, ¿verdad? Sí. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my uh, translator in trouble right now. <laughs> Las ventajas de la inversión en México. Tenemos una economía sólida en infraestructura turística, tenemos una ubicación geográfica, un sistema bancario estable, tenemos un acceso preferencial a Estados Unidos por la conectividad que tenemos y tenemos un liderazgo en la región, en Latinoamérica. A eso se le llama competit competitividad. The advantages of investing in Mexico, we have a solid economy uh, with uh, tourism infrastructure, uh, uh, geographic um, uh, play, good placement, uh, with a uh, banking system that's uh, stable. Uh, we also have easy access to the United States because of our closeness and connection. And we are leaders within the Latin American area, which makes us competitive. La oportunidad inmobiliaria al 2030, como ustedes podrán ver, tenemos ingresos familiares que se duplica, la construcción va de 12 a 14 millones, y una serie de datos que como comentó ahorita nuestro este, moderador, esa información todos la van a tener ahí en, su, este, uh, en, su, en la página de internet, sirve que practican su español. The opportunity in real estate for 2002, through 2030, uh, you guys can see that the family areas are going to grow, and then also you guys will be able to see some of these um, slides in... Um, and through the internet when they put, put them on the website. Y como ya vino el moderador para acá, yo creo que ya me va a decir que me. And since she vaya, came ¿no? over here, I think I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very smart man from a very wonderful country with a Muchas great gracias. interpreter. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a todos, Chris. Muchas thank gracias. you. Thank you very much. Excellent job, thank you very much. And now we're going to hear about Costa Rica, which is always one of the top three cities, that countries that everyone else wants to move to. So let's hear from Ophelia Ujua, and she's gonna be joined by Alan Lungo with the Costa Rica Real Estate Association. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. Before my friend and colleague Alan Lungo will show you some of the real estate information. I would like to tell you why you should invest and live in my country, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is famous for its unique environment, the beauty of its flora and fauna, gorgeous tropical climate all year round with two seasons, the green when occasional showers keep everything lush and blooming, and dry when the skies are sunny and blue every day. Costa Rica does not suffer from severe weather, such as hurricanes and tornadoes. There are no major fluctuations in temperatures in both seasons, and the country is blessed by mountains, rivers, the Pacific, and the Atlantic Oceans. Our goal is to be carbon neutral by 2021. We talk in real estate about location, location, location. Costa Rica is beautifully located in the middle of Central America, given easy access to the north and the south of the Americas by air, by land, and by sea. 
since we have to make it a little short, I'm just going to mention some of the key places. Liberia, Arenal Volcano, Tamarindo, Limón, San Jose, which is the capital, Manuel Antonio, some of the very good parts, and Osa Peninsula. But I want to tell you about the business environment, which I think is very important. When one invests in a foreign country, one looks for the risk factors. Political risk. Costa Rica is one of the most stable democracies in the world. No army, no wars, no revolutions. A peaceful country where dialogue is our most useful weapon. Our judicial system applies equally to foreigners and citizens alike. Safety. Costa Rica is a friendly and welcomes foreigners. They have the same rights by our constitution as Costa Ricans. Economy. Costa Rica has a very stable economy. The protection in the Costa Rican financial system helped to avoid severe impacts from the most recent financial crisis. The president of Costa Rica, Luis Guillermo Solis, just announced on the 19th of October a boost to the economy by taking positive measures and keeping the inflation to zero at the end of this year and to lower the banking interest rates by two points. And follows by education. One of our biggest assets is education. A substantial part of our budget is spent on education with a very high literacy rate. English is spoken by most Costa Ricans and bilingual education is taught in all schools. Then I like to talk to about the Costa Ricans. I think this is our biggest treasure. The people of Costa Rica are very unique and its biggest treasure. They're always willing to help and make foreigners feel right at home. We are known around the world for three things. We're peaceful, where dialogue and education is our banner. We're green, ecological and environmentally conscious. And we are pura vida. Costa Ricans strive for the pursuit of happiness for all residents, foreigners and natives alike. And our famous slogan is Pura Vida, which I just mentioned, which means pure life. I invite and welcome all of you to experience my country, and we will do our best to make you feel part of our paradise. I do thank you for allowing me to expose this part of the, our presentation and to allow me the opportunity to be proud of my country. Thank you. Excellent job. Thank you so much. Ophelia, not, Ophelia is one of the treasures of the Costa Rican people herself. <laughs> I can say that. Um, we're going to breeze through this. I'm not going to go through much of the detail. I'll give you the main themes. But we're doing it in this fashion because Ophelia has lived her life as a Costa Rican and knows why it's a treasure. I'm the classic story of an expat who moved there 11 years ago to follow my dreams, and I found them. And so I'm here to tell you that the biggest thing I sell isn't real estate, it's dreams. And if you want to bring your dreams to Costa Rica, we'll figure it out. So very quickly, um, it's very, uh, there's two basic markets in Costa Rica. The area around San Jose has its own professional traditions and financial models for realtors. The Pacific Coast is where the North Americans are mostly congregated, which is where I live. And in that market, which with which I'm the most familiar, it's very similar to the United States. And it's the properties even priced in dollars. And you'll get this presentation. And after the session today, if you'd like to ask specific questions, um, please come up and see me. Uh, the be best thing to know about it is that the closings are very short. The first piece of property I bought took one signature in about eight minutes. <laughs> Um, and the other advancement in Costa Rica is that all properties are in a national database, which is available online, and you can have a free account when you're a realtor, and in that account is a complete history of the property, all of its former liens, when the owners got divorced, who the neighbors are, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all online and it's all free. In term <laughs> I'm sorry? No, it isn't my house. <laughs> and they're These, also on Proxio. Yeah, we are, we are 
Actually, the reason we got connected to Teresa is I think we were the third country to pick Proxio. And uh, Teresa and Miami took us in their arms and they've been our guardian angels ever since, so thank you. Um, as far as the purchase process goes, it's an evolved legal system. It's very traditional. You submit a written offer. There's a counter or an acceptance. There's a due diligence period. There's um, the deposit that, uh, that you can put down a property, usually 10%. And when everything's fine, it just closes. And you go sign a legal book in the lawyer's office, and it's over. Um, one of the best things about Costa Rica, the property taxes are one quarter of 1% per year, and there's no reassessments. So, so it only changes when the property is sold the next time. So I'm telling everyone, because we did have a 40% value drop in the crash, as Ophelia said, we did not have an economic crisis. We had a real estate crisis because the Americans stopped coming. You can come down and get an ocean view lot with a tremendous view of the Pacific for $100,000 or $150,000. The property taxes every year would be $250 to $375 for the year. Hold it till you're ready to build your dream house, but come and buy it now. And there's this, the statistics. There's recently, it started to go back up again, but we are short of inventory because most of the developers really took it in the shorts, forgive me, um, in the crash, and they're kind of scared about building. So we're really focused on resales right now, and we're looking for new projects. So developers, please come and see us. There's lots of land there. There's land the banks are holding because they took it back, and they're ready to sell it to you. Oh, and just for a statistic, the average sale in Costa Rica is about $200,000. You can get a two-bedroom ocean view condo furnished or across the street from the beach for about $250,000. Very quickly, the profession is unlicensed. As you all know, you simply need to be a citizen or a legal resident to sell real estate. Um, it's a measure of your commitment that you bother to voluntarily join one of the associations um, and take our classes, but that's really all the training that's available. Unfortunately, your U.S. realtor license doesn't mean anything in Costa Rica. It's all about being a legal worker because they want to be able to get you on the tax rolls. So you can become a resident and work there. It takes 10 to 12 months. A lot of people are doing it. You do not have to apply to be a resident, to live there while you apply, um, but then you can come down and you can work in our office or work anywhere in the country. And we are connected to lots of associations, as you can imagine. So, and if you aren't committed to move your career there, we're very happy to help you be a referral realtor to Costa Rica. Our association has a category of membership that's referral realtor. You can simply join. You understand that you're never going to get paid more than the referral fee, but then you can buy the Proxio widget for the Costa Rica database, have it appear on your website, have all of my properties with your name on it, and just refer away with your clients. So come see us. The most important thing to know is you need six months valid time on your passport before they'll let you on the airplane. So don't book a trip without having a pretty fresh passport or one with a year or so left on it. Second thing is you, can, you do not have to convert money. U.S. dollars and Costa Rican colonies are taken equally. U.S. credit cards work fine in Costa Rica. If you do bring cash, don't bring anything bigger than a 20 because it might be refused because they'll assume it's counterfeit because we are in the traffic pool of all the drug money. We're going to say thank you to Ophelia and to, <laughs> to Alan in Costa Rica. We're going to quickly jet around the world and we're going to Russia. So please welcome Ildar Hasanov. Hello, dear colleagues. Yes, it is an honor for me to be here. Uh, I would like to tell about uh, real estate market in Russian Federation. Uh, to be honest, the real estate market is only 25 years old because uh, till uh, 1991, 
there was no turnover of the real estate at all because of communist time, you know, this problem. But maybe no problem, but nevertheless. Uh, so, by the way, this picture was done from uh, headquarters of our company just uh, five days ago. Wow. And now, yes, 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 really, it is true. The average temperature for this time of year usually minus uh, 10 Fahrenheit. Yes, uh, you can imagine. So, uh, if... <laughs> Uh, if we speak about uh, real estate market in Russian Federation, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the price dynamics. I can show you just a moment. Yes, this is uh, price uh, per square meters, one squ uh, about, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, you can see the, there is evident correlation with all price, which is really so. So, uh, the one of the line, the blue one is oil price, the red one is real estate price in our country. So can you imagine, uh, of course, I, I'm not going to discuss why it is so, but it is true. Yes, and uh, moreover, but nevertheless, it is more profitable to invest in real estate in Russia because you, uh, the oil can't be rented out at least. So, uh, next, uh, first of all, uh, of course, it is time to, sp to speak about peculiarities, yes, of real estate market. And uh, I want to say about two items. First of all, it is about mortgage rates and, uh, um, population, and population in our country. So, you can see, uh, just a moment, problematic, despite our country is really big one, the density is uh, really different in, in uh, every part, parts of country. So uh, the main population is concentrated in the west part and east part is only 6 million people in the half territory. Can you imagine? Yes, uh, and at the same time, uh, I would say about uh, quantity of square meters per one capita. It is only 220 uh, square feet per one citizen, per one, per one capita, yes. Uh, and uh, this is really a problem, and at the same time, it is opportunity for growing for next years. But according to the previous experience, the crisis, can, uh, the crisis can't be for long. And moreover, uh, for last maybe two months, we feel really kind of... Uh, maybe no renovation, of course, but increasing, some uh, good figures appeared, and uh, it is time maybe to think, uh, let's maybe turn back a little, just a moment, okay. Uh, yes, you, you see that there is evident uh, cycle here in Russian market from uh, 1994, there is, um, and now we see it is time to, for, grow, for growth again. Um, moreover, uh, if we speak about mortgage rates, now it is about 13% uh, per year, really. Uh, but at the same time, we are expecting that maybe in uh, three or four years, it will be only uh, maybe about 6 or 7%. Uh, next. Uh, now it is, and of course, uh, we have uh, really a lot of uh, things uh, um, really good, but uh, I want to say about one of them, about uh, registration system, because now it is possible for real estate agency to make uh, registration in our offices. There is no reason to online, there is no reason for clients to go uh, to any other places, no across, no notary. Uh, no insurance at all, it, it, and moreover, it takes just five days. And, uh, and for example, for comparison, only five years ago, the duration of this period was about uh, 30 days. And this is really good, and uh, moreover, any citizen can be in front of his uh, desktop, and put some buttons, yes, attach some files, and that is all, the registration is done. So, uh, now there is also our state uh, is, our country is quite um, sociable, sociable, yes, uh, because we have a lot of programs uh, to stimulate people to buy flats, to buy 
uh, real estate and it works. Uh, two, both of them, uh, two of them are really um, important. It is maternity capital and young family. So a lot of people can afford to buy a house without having money, yes, and uh, this is really work. Uh, now, despite crisis, uh, if we speak about the um, realtor sphere, yes, realtor sectors, it has been prospering for last 15 years. But last years we have been facing a really, I can say, uh, serious crisis. Yes, the sales were down, and uh, but nevertheless, now we have a really good structure of. Um, maybe uh, structure to build relationship with our partners, which is banks, devel de developers, construction builder companies. So uh, now situation is that the mortgage in, real, in, the, in the office of real estate company is cheaper than in banks. If if clients if client uh, clients go to the office of real estate company, for him it is cheaper because of discount for for rates for rates yes and it is really help us uh, to maybe to develop our relation with clients with partners uh, okay this is example of sites of our building in our company in in, in our country so re to be honest last uh, maybe five years before crisis uh, we did really a lot of. We did. Really, we have been doing. Or we did really a lot of big job. So uh, we um, build our country. Build it a lot of uh, new houses. Can you imagine that? For example, in some region, uh, uh, there is uh, about uh, 10 square feet per one citizen was built in in the year per year. And this is really good. Uh, I uh, looked at figures here in USA. It is uh, uh, lower, much lower now. Yes. And uh, next, now it is time to speak about uh, the structure of Russian real estate market. At, at this slide, you can see the uh, chart diagrams, which shows the maybe the way of buying. Yes, and the way of supply and demand. And this is really interesting. Okay, 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 understand. <laughs> I felt it, by the way. I was waiting for you. Okay, and <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, this slide, yes, I understand situation. And the last one I would like uh, to say, it is just comparison of two similar cities. It is Tumen and uh, Seattle. Yes, you can see the figures. You can. Uh, enjoy it, yes, and uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, nevertheless, of course, we have also something. Uh, in uh, yes, we have some advantages. Yes, in our country. So uh, I understand that is all. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Excellent job. Thank you very much. Now we're going to jet around the world again, and we are going to end up in Brazil. So please welcome Joaquim Rivero, president of FINASI, and Flavio Amari, the next president of Sokovi SP. Thank you. I better start fast, because we have just seven minutes for me. And I negotiate with Joaquim, OK, Teresa. So I'm going to put my, now my chronometer. There you go. I want to, oh, we changed the presentation. You want to you do Yeah, I am Flavio. <laughs> we don't have the presentation. I start, I'm just going to stop counting. Okay. okay. Start over, Teresa, right? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I'm starting over. <laughs> okay. I'm Flavio Amari. I'm from Secovi, Sao Paulo. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm coming president, as Teresa said. Secovi is an association of, realtor, of uh, uh, land developers, of sales company. We have uh, 75 companies, 75,000 companies in South. It's the largest association in South America, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm going I'm to go over this presentation because we have all of this. It's going to be available for you, so I'm going to go fast on this to leave right to Joaquin. I'm going to test you on this. We can go to Joaquin. I'm going to talk. I'm losing 20 seconds. Okay. 
but I think it's important to say when we have a short time, we're going to focus on the important message. That's why I just did this. We analyze when we talk in real estate, we must analyze economics, demographics, and the international real estate, we must analyze and focus on the currency exchange. What's happening nowadays, we're facing some turbulence in Brazil, political problems that's going to economics. We have a recession, as Lawrence said. We're going to go on minus three or minus four our GDP in 2015. And 2016 is not going to be different from this. Our exchange rate was 1.7, 1.8 reais per dollar in 2010. Now it's about 4 reais to, uh, to 1 dollar. So the prices in Brazil is getting very attractive to international people, especially American people. Now we can buy what we could buy uh, two years ago, now you can buy with 33% less, 40% less. So it's a huge opportunity for all of the realtors to go to Brazil and look for some investments for your clients here in the United States. Inflation is 10% this year. Interest rate, our central bank is 14.25% a year. It's too high our interest, our central bank interest. We are losing jobs. When Lawrence just show us the increasing, it's the opposite in Brazil. When you were here losing jobs, we were creating jobs. Now it's the opposite. We're losing about 100,000 jobs per month in Brazil since January 2015. So when we look at crisis, it's always an opportunity. I, I'm, I'm, as a businessman, I continue investing and preparing my, my projects because in one or two or three years, we're going to recover all this, and it's going to be a huge opportunity for the people who invest now. As I, I, yesterday, Teresa, I, I told a story that when I came to your Miami Association of Realtor Congress in Miami 2010, I saw the prices here in the United States. Then I come back to my house in Brazil, and I make the reunion with my family, and we must invest in the United States. One month after that, we came and we bought a condo here, in my, in, not here, but in Miami. So now I think it's the opposite. We have to buy things when the crisis is in it. So Brazil now is a good opportunity for all of you to start looking at Brazil, because we will have a recovery in about one year or two, doesn't matter, but we're going to get back because we have a demand. We have five. I have four, three more minutes here. I'm I'm, you look at me, I just make me nervous, Teresa. <laughs> we have a huge demand. We have people who need housing in Brazil. We have about six million our house deaths in Brazil. No microphone here. Six million <laughs> deaths in Brazil. We have some uh, 52 million people, 52 million people who are the millennials, 20 to 35 years old. This is the age to buy a real estate, to buy a house, to buy a land, to buy a condo. We have a huge need for housing in Brazil. We have supply for that, but we have the problem now is the confidence. Our confidence index never been so sl too, too slow, too low. So when we have economics in crisis, but we have demographics, demo demographics uh, numbers who uh, uh, increases the opportunities, I think we must look at the opportunities and invest there. Just one last thing, okay? <laughs> I, I don't want... You're just too cute. <laughs> okay. Just, just one more thing I'd like to talk, to talk to you is our Real Estate Week in Sao Paulo. It's going to happen the last week of August, starting on 27th, ending on the 31st of August. It's an important time to see by yourselves, with your eyes, what's happening in Brazil and all the opportunities. We're going to be there in Secovi waiting for you to participate in our Congress and have the opportunity to see. and maybe with us, the realtors, the developers, the land developers, with the Secovi uh, members, to find some opportunities to invest your money. I just, Joaquin, I tried to do my best here, just to, to not to get out of the stage, and that's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you.
Very quick, please, Richard. Okay. Good afternoon, realtors. <laughs> Fenasi is a founded in 1986. It should represent up to 300 real estate agents. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back to San Diego, see you many friends. Let's talk about our real estate opportunities in Brazil, how we can do business together. Uh, Brazil is a country which has a lot of opportunities to explore, including to real estate marketing. Many multi multi-millionaires live in Brazil. They spend a lot of money, it's a good and a service, and they also buy real estate and the country and abroad. A lot of the countries, and not only in São Paulo and Rio, a lot of professional and corporate events and congress take place every day. Real estate and tourism is now cheap in Brazil, due to the exchange rates. A lot of tech companies are making money in Brazil. Brazilians love the digital, digital world, the, like e-commerce, social media, etc. Facebook recognizes that the first real estate sold through that social media was in Brazil. Although Brazil has some very expensive real estate, especially in Copacabana Beach, the average price are not too high. The average is $3.3 thousand per square meter for, per square meter for homes. Foreigner can buy, then with no restriction in Brazilian realtors are allowed to share commission. Commission is a, a, a realtor in Brazil, and many, many realtors in Brazil is here. That's why why money for, 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 for earnings are investment to the quality. Brazil has branched for the most important companies of the world. Of course, many Brazilians buy real estate in South Florida, when the top destination. I'm sure many of you have already sold a real estate to Brazilian. That's, we are here, networking and to business together in Brazil, on the US. If you are going to attend the Secov Convention, you can also attend the Fenace Convention, the venue, a huge life to call Bonito, inside the Pantanal region, fish and ecotourism. Uh, Brazil, it's now uh, great, it's moment investment. So, uh, is here. Uh, September, uh, Conasi, it's uh, Bonito, Mato Grosso do Sul. It's Bonito, it's good. Uh, inviting your people. Okay? So let's business together. Thank you. I'm sorry I speak English a little. Thank you. Mr. Joaquim and, and Flavio, thank you so much. And I, I do encourage you to attend Sokovi uh, Real Estate Week and also the Konasi event. It is so great that they are having them one right after another so you can take advantage of both in one week in Brazil. And uh, my husband and I have attended both more than once. 
and you have never seen a welcome like the Brazilian one. And so uh, we wanted to give a, a little extra uh, thank you so much to Brazil because you brought the largest delegation here to the San Diego Congress. Thank you. Well, we've taken you around the world in a really short period of time, and the great news is that all of those presentations with great information are all going to be available for you with their permission to please go ahead and use the information because when you use it, we know you're going to be promoting their markets. Am I correct? Thank you all for, uh, for being here with us today, and we're going to turn you back over to the Chairman Mark. Thank you. A big hand for the group today. Appreciate it. They've traveled very far to be here, specifically Brazil. I think Brazil and Russia probably traveled the farthest.